All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, we have none other than, in my personal opinion, the king of the underground. We got to die for right here, right now, on the line. How you doing this evening? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing great. Um, I want to say, man, uh, not only myself, but our listeners have really been digging your music here on the radio station, man. So uh, just thank thank you for providing us with your time and, of course, making some real hip-hop. Yeah, man, thank you, man. I appreciate all y'all. I appreciate it. So I have to ask you, man, like from the beginning, like what made you decide to get into the music industry? Oh, man, I've been, um, I've always, you know, ever since I was, like, nine, ten years old, I always heard my mother say, you know, I was always into it, and then as I got older, you know, I bought my first rhyme and fell in love with it when I was, like, what, 17? Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's what made me decide to get into the music industry, man, because, um, I mean, I'm And also, in uh, 2015, you were actually a judge for Compton's Got Talent. Can you tell us a bit more about that experience and how did you land uh, being a judge for that, uh, for that, sorry, for that particular show? Oh, because um, it was like pretty much the thing. It was like one of the first like talent shows in Compton. Like, so, you know, I had me somebody, Miss Jackie, you know, my mom, Jackie, was shout out to Compton, to Compton, you know, she had, um, Introduced me to the mayor, and they had pretty much, you know, gave me a shot to sit down with YG. That was YG mom and um, Bambi mom. You know, me and my poly was, they needed to let me judge it. So they called us out there, and, you know, it was an honor, man. It was an honor. If you don't want me asking, like, do they do it every year, or was that just like a one time thing? Like, that's my understanding. That was like a one time thing, but every year they, like, we out there, you know, giving, like, every, like, Thanksgiving, we give out turkeys and stuff like that every Christmas. We also do, you know, doing toy drives for kids that we can't really, you know, we don't have much to do. So I'll be trying to, you know, volunteer as much as I could as possible to give that opportunity, you know. And and also, the one thing that I saw on your Facebook is actually a picture of a uh, of the Bruce Willis Armageddon movie. Um, I I couldn't really find very much particular information pertaining to that. Like, did were you part of the soundtrack, or did you kind of do like a project just Kind of like related to that. If you can shed some light on that, if 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 you if, if possible. No, I, um, I, um, I, um, I, you know, I, um, I was back in the days. I was used to uh, Facebook doing and it's just something that that's stuck there that I'm trying to get off there. So no, I don't have nothing to do with that pretty much. I oh, have okay. a lot to do with like you know, I was in the uh, landed to, like an extra role in the straight out of town for movie got some people in it. So. Okay, yeah, because like I, me, me personally, I, you have me on Facebook, so you probably already noticed that I'm a huge Bruce Willis fan. So when I saw that, I'm like, yo, man, I got, I, I gotta ask something pertaining to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, you know, that that that's just something I gotta try to get off there. And also, uh, while we're on the movie topic of things, I also saw some posts on your Facebook as well that you were actually in the movie. You were actually in the movie on Killer Robots. I have to ask you, can you tell us a bit more about that movie and how did that? How did you land that role? Oh, the uh, Killer Robot movie, man. Like I had, um, I had, you know, I knew, I know this guy named, um, what is his name? Um, this is one guy who he went to like this. Um, be in the movie, I don't know if you heard of be in the movie, so I had, I had, you know, went up to the see him, and I guess the dude had, didn't want to, like, stay, they had a character who didn't want to, like, stay the deal, you know what I mean, and I'm telling him, like, you know, as long as I can land the role, I, I'm willing to stay it, you know, so they turned the stage to my beard, and I had to stay my beard, and they gave me my own trailer, and, you know, all that stuff, it was like, it was awesome, it was awesome. And the one thing I also noticed as well that you were also in the the movie City of Lies, the Tupac and Biggie murder, uh, the Tupac and Biggie murder investigations. I have to ask you, uh, what was it like actually being um, just on that set? Because I know like that was a really, really big thing that was going on, like those television shows, the movies pertaining to the murder and investigations. Yeah, they had Forrest Whitaker and um, Johnny Depp in that man, and you know they had called they called me out. It was like you know. We have a lot of, a lot of, you know, you know, they wanted to fill in a lot of, you know, scenes and certain things. So it was, they, they called me when I got up there, man. It was just like, it was 
out. It was, it was like out of this world because you wouldn't believe how some people want to give you the time of day to actually sit there and talk to you. You know, so it was cool. It was, it was, it was, it was um, a pretty good experience. You know. If you don't mind me asking, what what role did you actually play in that? That way, people can have, people that are listening, they can go back and watch it and uh, just uh, just uh, check you out. They made us they, they they had me play like a little gangster role at a um, at a baseball series, at a baseball game. It was I was a fourth year mm-hmm. there, Johnny Depp talking about the whole Los Angeles scene about it was an LA scene in Los Angeles. And before we move off of the movie topic of things, man, I also. Ross saw that you were on the set of Straight Outta Compton. I have to ask you, what was that experience like, being able to be on the set of that movie and actually watch it in action? Oh, I would like to, first of all, hey man, I would like to give a shout out to my boy Dizzy, man. You didn't want to play the role of Trey in the um, Boys in the Hills crew, you know, and I'm not branded to him on the spread out, like one of, one of the little, like, you know, spread out of, they was having a, a little scene downtown LA where they were doing like a um, concert scene, but I already like pretty much touched bases with him already, you know, my boy did and he was like, hey man, they got a secret location, and this is where it's going to be tomorrow, so I showed up, man, and that's where he pretty much, you know, he, 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 he was down to earth now, you know, so he pretty much put me on that one right there. If you want me asking, he like, uh, what, what actual scenes were you actually on the set for? Um, I was play, I played one of I was part of the lynch mob. Oh, so when they were doing the whole fight scene, actually, like in the mall, eh? I'm sorry, not the mall, though, of the no. entrance of the recording studio. No, when they was at the club scene, when he was at the club scene, where Easy walked in and was talking to um Ice Cube at the club scene in New York. Oh, okay, I, I know what scene you mean. Yeah, like I watched that movie tons and tons of times. That's the one where they where they were trying to actually in in, in talks of trying to get N.W.A. back together. Hey man, I gotta say, you played a phenomenal role in that man. Like I actually, I remember going to the theater and seeing that movie. And for a Hollywood movie, it's actually really good. Yeah man, yes, it, it gave a lot. Of, it really gave a lot of people opportunity. So you know, shout out to everybody who actually all the producers for all that um, whole movie. You know. And before we just move off that topic, the one thing I have to ask, because I I do know like the the. The producers, I believe, of the movie were like uh, Ice Cube and Dr. Dre. Did you have the opportunity to meet those two individuals while you were on set? Nah, they was, you know, you know, they have their own little, you know, their own little, you know, off the off, and they all know as well, like the world, you know, they only they do, they had to work, they only had to work, you know, and I started pretty much socializing with these people, you know, they're very professional, you know. That is true, yeah, you know what I mean? They probably don't want to be on the open because they're going to get bum-rushed by a lot of people, so I don't blame them, you know what I mean? <laughs> and also, in uh, 2015, you actually won the West Reunion Honors Indie Artist Award. I have to ask you, how did it feel to win that particular award? And if so, how many other awards do you have under your belt? Uh, big Clutch of the Law. I mean, not Big, um, Big, um, Huncho. Huncho. I'm sorry, Huncho. Huncho did that, man. He honored me, man, um, in 2015 alongside with, um, my boy Andre, um, uh, Andre, my boy that played Stacy from the, uh, movie The Wood. So we all got, we was all honored with that one that night. But it was amazing, and it was one of, like, my, that was my first, first, first biggest, like, actual award achievement. So it was like, that was like, that was so awesome. And then, you know, here lately I got, you know, a couple of certificates of, of recognition by my district night council members for being a leader of the community and, you know, things like that. Thanks to um, Diana Rogers, you know, she did that for me. And you know what? It's it's always a great feeling when you even get a no, when you even get nominated for an award, man. And uh, winning it probably felt ten times better as well. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great, man. I mean, yeah, yeah, like you know, I, honestly, you know, when you doing so many things, I just like to keep. I would like to thank you and your the whole platform that you have because it's like I don't even know who recommended you to me or nothing like that. But it's awesome because I see you even recognize me for that. You know that I'm doing my thing as well. So. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, man. How how I how I actually found you was um I, I get a lot of artists popping up in my uh, people you may know list, and if uh, say if your profile picture catches my eye, 
I scope out your profile and I look at the music and I have to say, man, when I heard your music, I was like, man, this is some real, excuse my language, some real fucking hip hop right here, man. I, I was digging it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody told me, man, you ain't, you know, you still got that 90s swag, and, you know, you ain't changing up. So it's like, you know, I'm going to stick to that. I, I don't want to ever change, you know. I, I'm willing to do a gap to get some quarters, but, you know, for the same thing. Like, I, I'm not going to, I can't do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, you know, with your talent, man, you actually will still get recognized. Once you get that 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 Exactly, and you know what, with your talent, man, you actually will still get recognized with that 90s vibe, that 90s feel, but you know what I mean? I wouldn't change, man, because, you know, yes, mumble rap is a thing now, but just like a phase, it's going to go away. And I really do hope that someday, you know what I mean, real hip-hop with the music, the actual, like, the five elements, everything actually comes back into reality. Yeah, yeah, it should, it should be, because, you know, like, you know, like they say, history is people, yeah. you know. I mean, the world won't eventually need something, need something we can actually feel and relate to because, you know, it's not back to reality. So I'm sure it's going to come back. And also, on uh, March 12th of this year, you actually released the song 310. I have to ask you, what is the inspiration behind that particular track? And, of course, where can our listeners buy or stream themselves a copy? Uh, you can go, they can find it on Spotify. They can find it on most of the platforms right now. Um, uh, you can find on TV, baby. You can find on Salon. You know, uh, um, pretty much all platforms. But the whole inspiration behind the song is not. Um, I had to like. I'm not gonna lie. Like my last actual live performance on stage was April of like 2018. You know, so I had walked away from the whole thing. I mean, completely walked away from everything to take care of my, you know, personal problems that I had in my life. You know, so. And I'm actually, you know, two, here I am, like, what, two years later, you know? And it's like, you know, I had to come back and hit it with something. And, and the process of just getting back, you know, it's like nobody's ever reached out. Or nobody's ever, hey, man, how you doing? And nothing and nothing. So it's just like, I had a lot of inspiration and a lot of things to say on my song. So I had three minutes and ten seconds. So the whole track begins is actually three minutes and ten seconds. Um, mm -hmm. Plus, you know, I'm from California, so, you know, three things. And also, another track that I really took a liking to, man, was actually got released uh, June 5th of uh, so this month. You actually released a single, Beast Mode, featuring uh, one of my good friends, uh, Erg7. I have to ask you, uh, what's the story behind that song, and how did y yourself and Erg7 actually get connected? Oh, Erg7, man, because, oh, yeah, yeah, because this is what it is. This is, this is the whole thing. Like, um, I have a, um, I was coming out with this song, like, I like, I haven't done still releases, but it was just that I had to get a few content from a few artists, like, my boy, what's the piece of my boy, Flip the phone? I got a hook up with my boy, Corrupt, to actually be, uh, you know, the hook up with one of them, the family name, to see if I can still release that Cali Roll call, get him on it, because he passed away during the time I was, you know, putting this song together. You understand? So, I was going to release a song called Cali Roll Call. I had happened, I had hooked up with him because 
songs for the Beatles on the West Coast Movement on a track called Cali Road called West Coast Movement. Uh, and that was way before Snoop came out with the whole Long Beach Movement verse. So I have to ask you to die for, what is next for you, man? Is there anything that I happen to miss during this interview? Anything else you would like to promote and let our live listeners know while we still have you here on the air? Um, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm, focused, I'm working on a few little, you know, few, um, like, releases, you know, for a single, but mainly, you know, I'm focusing on my, um, open up to lunch my own country right now, my own clothing line, and we got the whole skate work brand around my kids, my son, so I want to release that, um, I'm going to release a, a skate work brand, I'm going to launch that in the process, you know, I'm trying to, I, I'm waiting for the coronavirus to get off, you know, man, I, that's why I want to get the chance. I love the tour, so I had a 16 state tour I was going to do before this whole thing, you know, came about. But I still got everybody in my pocket ready to go when it get up, but I love to travel, man, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm mainly recording and everything, and I'm going to get up here with my husband and the two DVDs, top all in the family, and then, so, you know, I'm working on, you know, trying, you know, trying to get over there with them right now. So, to die for, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that comes on the platform. Uh, just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And if you can, drop them social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you if they're not already doing so. All right. Uh, most of my, my uh, you can follow me. Most of my, uh, follow me on most is to die for the number two, D-Y-E, the number four, D-E-E. Type that in anywhere. Most places you'll find me there on, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, anything like that. Twitter, everything definitely man i want to say thank you so much again for coming up on 97.7 outlaw radio fm it was an absolute honor most definitely a privilege you ever need anything don't hesitate to hit me up i got you i got you man. I you in, man. And one, love, man. one love brother have yourself a wonderful night man uh, you too.